for my next round of golf on holiday. I paid a visit to their driving range and it wasn't particularly satisfactory. And there's nothing like hitting your first drive and hearing a ball rattle through the trees. So we're straight into recovery mode. I always believe if you can accept the bogey and play for that bogey, you actually have a better chance of making a par than if you try for the par. If that makes sense. A little under hit, lands short, runs off to the right. So, despite good intentions, I'm not going to get my par, but not by much. <laughs> Hello everyone, I've done my usual. When I play away, I just like to get off the first hole, get away from the clubhouse before I open this large hole under my nose. So last week I played the old, I played Tenby, which is literally just a mile and a quarter over there. Today I'm playing Trefloin, Trefloin Manor. And please forgive me if I've butchered that name. This opened in 1997. I played it in 2002. I don't remember much about it. Certainly all these trees would have been a lot shorter. They may have even been staked. I may have been getting free drops, but there's going to be no free drops for trees today. This place has matured wonderfully. I was going to hit three wood off this tee when I looked at the card, but as it's uphill, I think it's driver. Although my driver and I aren't exactly on speaking terms at the moment, but uh, we'll figure it out. On holes of 350 yards and less, I would normally be reaching for a three wood. But the yardage doesn't always dictate what we take off the tee. So being up the hill, driver it is. Even though we're not really on talking terms today. wrong side of the flag and these greens are very tricky so we're straight into defensive putting there's absolutely no point of having a real good go at that hole from the wrong side now the greens are holding very nicely so I'm not afraid of this being downhill and the green running away from me I can fire at it with total confidence Well, this dog leg goes the wrong way for the fault I've got. And certainly with a big bunker down the left hand side, there's absolutely no point in me attempting to hit a draw. So I'll just do the best I can, which isn't particularly good. Oh. That's ugly. I made a discovery the other day. I thought it was the dryer that was shrinking my shirts. Apparently it was the fridge. Well, I've got absolutely nothing here. The ball is buried. One of those times when I wish I had a golf mate's lie. You know, sat up in the rough all the time, every time. Still, I've managed to advance it forwards. You know they say drive for show, putt for dough. If you don't drive for show, you ain't putting for any bloody dough. Well, still a long way back, but I can actually get a club on it this time. Although it's shut the face a fraction coming out of the rough. I don't think there's any worse feeling in the world when you're a low handicapper is messing up a par five. 
But there's nothing wrong with this hole. The fault is all with me. It's straighter than the other one. I say me and this are not on talking terms today. Got away with it at Tembi because it was so wide and all the rough was burnt out. That is not the case here. This is more the kind of golf course I'm used to. Tell you what, if I drive it like that at Lillybrook, I've had it. I got 153, ever so slightly downwind. I, I bet it's not even half a club but it is helping a fraction. I've got to jump a lie. This green kind of sits against me, so anything long is going to be a downhill putt. Well, I don't want a downhill putt. So seven iron, read the greens. Read the greens from here. Well, I wish I was hitting the ball just as well as I was in Thailand, back in March. The difference in Thailand is I wasn't in a hard bed, but I am this week. I always had something soft to lie on at night. That's run up a few feet short of the hole. Short being better than long. As I said in a previous video, read the greens from out here. Make a better choice. This par 3 has got a nasty bunker in the front, so it's a very easy decision to take the larger club and try and take it out of play. We'll find a hole that actually is going with the shape I've got today. So let's take advantage of it. And knowing that your shape fits the hole certainly boosts the confidence. And that's a beauty. Now I had several options here with irons and laying up what distance I want to lay up at. I chose a three wood to try and get as close as I can. But the green is not in that direction. Bugger. Well, the feature of this seventh green is that the entire left-hand side is supported by sleepers with a nasty little drop-off. You wouldn't want to miss it left. Short par five. I must take advantage of this one. Well, a bit of a big banana, but it's in the fairway. And today, when things are a little bit, uh, a little bit off with this thing, it's all you can ask for, isn't it? Two eleven, five wood, no holding back. Hey. 
Well, I've got nothing to say about that. Plenty to say about the next hole. There's a ditch across the fairway. And this is complete and utter indecision. I didn't know whether to go short of it, try and get over it. In the end, I hit my five wood and I did nothing. And this is what indecision does. You end up doing nothing. Straight into recovery mode, knock it out with the five iron. Leave myself a wedge. And sadly with this wedge, I landed just a little short of the green. So I got a rock hard bounce. And the ball shot right across the green. And I made a fool of myself in front of the clubhouse. doesn't really get any better here. Downhill, dog leg left, ditch across, five wood. And again, I lose it a fraction to the right. But as it happens, it turns out okay. Now I'm just gonna try and ease back on this 50 degree. And of course you chunk it. The only thing that saved me was this little upslope to the bunker. It was that bad it ran out of steam before I got onto the beach. But if you can put that aside, two average shots, and then hit two good ones. 11th hole, short par four, three wood. Well, I've missed this on the wrong side and I can't quite see how much space there is between the bunker and the flag. So it was a very easy option to go into defensive mode. Three yards right of the bunker, land it short, bump it on the green. But that's left me a downhill hiller. So, as you can see, we're into defensive putting again. And I'm quite happy for tapping pars when I'm on the wrong side of the banner. Stroke index one, a quarry in front of me, which is out of bounds, and an internal out bounds all the way down the right, just to stop you taking your driver and firing it into the next fairway. This hole is a shade awkward. All right, guys, this hole bit me. Four iron was too much. I, I should have taken a six iron off the tee. I've just gone off the edge here into the heavy rough. So I wasn't OB, I wasn't in the quarry. So I've taken a penalty. I'm gonna try another four iron. just made it on the green so we we'll make our bogey but beware if you come here it's very close to this OB and this deep grass I was lucky to find it
Now I thought that my drive was good, so I was very surprised to find it here. I can't go at the flag. Best thing I can do is short left. That'll give me a shot at the green. There's just a question of working out what the break is. And I've guessed here that it's somewhere around about 25 feet. Land it just short of the green. And let it kick off towards the flag. Two feet. Yeah, and that one was right out the top drawer. Well, I've just run through the dog leg a little bit. I can see the top of the flag, even though the camera can't. And it's a fairly simple 9-9 down the hill. Now that's the better view if I take the 5 wood off the tee instead of the 3 wood. Now I'm really, really enjoying this golf course. I especially like par 5s that I can get my teeth into. Something a bit longer than the standard sort of driver five wood, things that you can reach. I do enjoy these longer ones, especially the last. It's 570 from the yellow tees and it's 580 from the white tees. But it's wide enough so you can give it a couple of big biffs. The greens here are in excellent shape. When you consider the dry weather we've had, they're holding anything that hits them. Of course, you've got to hit them. Just chipping here, because I've got a little shoulder to come over. And that's a little on the short side. I'm having to do quite a few recoveries today. But that's right up my alley. Out with the driver for the first time on the back nine. And I think we're playing this 17th from the 15th. I'm not sure, that might have gone off the back. Out with the pitching wedge. Now the camera flattens all the slopes. So I've just come uphill, downhill, and now uphill. I didn't quite have enough steam on that. Understandable from that range, you don't always get them. Oh dear. Well, I'm feeling a little sad to be honest. Not about my driving. I mean, I put in a lot of effort and a lot of lessons before I went to Thailand to be able to drive the ball that straight all the time. Here, I've, I've, I've hit two or three straight ones and that's about it really. So I've got no complaints about my driving. What I'm sad about is this round is over. A lot of very interesting holes, challenging holes, picturesque holes, especially the par threes. But we all like those kind of like downhill par threes, don't we? They're, they're always slightly more attractive than one going uphill or one of 215 yards, of which there's a couple at Lillybrook, which always bite my ass. No, I'm just, I'm just sad that this day is over. Although we finished with a par five, so I've got a chance of, of actually finishing on a par. Even with my driving, I got a chance of finishing on a par. So uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you can. I should say that at the beginning because so many people drop off after about five or six holes, don't they? They don't watch the whole video. Shame really, because they're missing out. I'm not missing out. You're not missing out. 
they are. Let's get on the tee box and see if I can find a straight one for you. Cheerio!